Who's good? Potato Spindly here with a very, very last minute movie review. It's going to be 2012 Zombie Apocalypse. It's one of those sci-fi original films from the asylum because you'd have to be crazy to think that this will get above a three-star rating in any channel, any platform, anything like that because it is so oddly made. But it's nice to know that whenever they realize that they can't, you know, sell on actual plot points or actual uh, acting ability, they can still go to gratuitous nudity and profanity. Most of their films have been going around the uh, the 70s and 80s movie style of people just trying to lose their virginity. So this kind of stood out to me. But uh, it, it was a fun little film. The basic thought and premise of the film is a virus's release. I think it's influenza-based, but considering the way the zombies behaved, it could also be a parasite. And it slowly spread to the point where everyone gave up and pretty much just set off some EMPs to try to keep it from spreading, which doesn't make sense to me. Now, I could understand EMPs being triggered as an effect of nuclear warheads being detonated. I, I don't know if I ever showed the cover. I don't know if it would be better to just trigger the EMPs as opposed to just nuking concentrated areas and the, the EMP being a secondary effect you might as well try to damage the areas instead of just saying, you know what, we're not even going to bother with this, let's just try to cut off all transportation, which really didn't work. Every major comp continent was affected. You know, island nations, they, they were probably fine unless someone, you know, took a trip to Thailand, came back. Okay, I didn't think about that one before I said it. Let's say took a trip to Mexico or Canada and then came back to wherever the fuck they were from. That, that would have spread it. But, um... Yeah, it's basically just following a bunch of survivors as they try to go to one of these little island regions that's going to be safe. I, I'm i not too nervous about spoiling anything from the film because it's a movie where nothing really happens. Now, the virus can go cross-species, oddly enough. You know, it, it doesn't just affect humans. It also affects dogs and, yeah, even tigers. Zombies manifest themselves in specific ways. So you have roughly three different types of zombie. You have the animal form. You have sprinters and you have shamblers. The shamblers will sometimes travel alone or they'll set up packs to try to ambush survivors. The runners will join the packs or just run at you like crazy. So that, that's pretty much all the tiers right there. They're not doing anything too crazy, but the zombies do seem intelligent enough to still pull off coordinated assaults. Uh, which is why I think that it could potentially be a parasite because they have that somewhat hive mind aspect. They have no real way of communicating, but they have an idea. Most of the movie was people really walking around talking about their feelings and discussing things that you really didn't see happen in the film. All the stuff that took place beforehand, you know, a lot of storytelling, a lot of character development, even though there wasn't much character to develop. And a lot of the movie felt like children playing zombies in the backyard with sticks and dirt and rocks and that shit because the way that people act and fight and enter certain situations the way they'd split up and talk to each other uh there was a lot of running away and screaming and panicking you wouldn't do anything to save this person but you would still pretend you did and say that there was nothing else you do it was um it was a little annoying at times and it, it was kind of predictable at points you knew who was going to die you knew who was going to live you knew there would be a somewhat sizable group the thing that bugged me was a lack of consistency and the cinematography taken away from the action that did happen. Now, the cinematography taken away from the action that did actually happen, there will be multiple cuts from zombies coming and exploding and all that stuff. Instead of being grouped together in a nice little fun, gory bundle, uh, they would cut back to characters' reactions, which would be kind of misplaced. So you'd have someone saying, okay, now we're going to have a reaction shot of you going, and we're going to put that in between this head exploding and this thing falling down. That kind of ruins the flow. It really does. It it doesn't sell to me, specifically. I don't find that entertaining. I don't find that attractive. It's it's a distraction. It's an additional cut. It's you padding the movie just a slight amount and trying to add a little bit of emotion that isn't there. And the lack of consistency with the story itself uh, actually happened on two occasions that I can recall right off, the, right off the top of my head. Both nearing the end of the movie. I think at a certain point they said, fuck it, let's just throw this in now. It's a zombie movie, there has to be an obligatory chainsaw kill. But with the EMP, even if the chainsaw is gas-powered, I'm fairly certain it still uses a spark plug and wire, so it would be affected by the EMP, it would not be able to power up at all. You might as well just grab the thing and start bashing a motherfucker over the head with it. Now, I think that there are still electronic parts, and the way an EMP works, well, 
I'm not going to do a full breakdown because it's it's one in the morning and I don't fully understand it myself. I would actually have to read it. But what I understand uh, from the name itself is basically it basically it damages electronics. Okay, anything with with uh, a flow going through it, an electrical flow, it's going to fucking destabilize it, fry it, blow it the fuck up, shit like that. So yeah, if there is something hooked up, you know, power source to wire. That shit is done. There's a circuit board just out in the middle of the street. Done. You know, shit like that. Uh, so even if you could find parts to repair this equipment, yeah, it could work. But the parts would be few and far between. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to go back and read up a little bit more on that. Because it is an interesting subject. Anything having to do with electronics is actually fairly interesting. Until you start getting into the flow and the wires and all that bullshit. But not an electrician. Pretty sure that's outside their field. Electricians don't typically have to deal with EMPs, as far as I know. I'm rambling. The second part was actually the very end of the film. Uh, there was an operating ferry. And when I say ferry, I'm not talking about Tinkerbell, you know, freaking out and kicking dust everywhere. No, I'm talking about a boat that typically transports large portions of people and vehicles and supplies from mainland to an offshore island. You know, one of those little back and forth kind of tugboatish things. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of advanced equipment on that that wouldn't be fucking operational. Chances are the engine wouldn't even fucking start. Now, mechanical parts aren't going to be affected by an EMP. It's the electronic parts. But considering the year it was released and the way that most boats function, yeah, nah, that motherfucker would probably be dead in the water. There would be a lot of shit that would need replacing. And even if you could find the parts, even if you could test them and replace them it wouldn't fit the time frame of the movie so they, they pretty much just wrote off a large portion of why people couldn't do certain things like ride like take cars and shit like that and uh just kind of toss it aside for a little bit of closure wasn't really a fan of that this motherfucker's getting uh one potato yeah let's get one potato like them subscribe keep on keeping on i I'm going the fuck to bed. Good night.